even lift them up, you have passed the door. And the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of hosts, He is the King of Glory. Go worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before Him. All the saints. Make a joy of the Lord unto the Lord only man. Serve the Lord with thanksgiving. Come before his presence with singing. Oh, he that the Lord he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, we are the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving. To his court with praise, be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. For God is good. And all the time, his mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Eternal God, our Father, is once again that we assemble in your sanctuary. We come to you if there is a word from the Lord. We know that there is always a word from you. A word that will lift us up. A word that will save. A word that will sanctify. Father, we thank you today. We bless you today. We thank you for the many, many blessings that I have bestowed upon.
Where they have my reading completed by Deacon Daniel. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll hear the uh, Lamentations, chapter 3 in our Bible. Lamentations, chapter 3 in our Bible, starting at verse 21. After Deacon Daniel read the scriptures to allow the hearing on the Exodus of Renee, Luzon, if she would lead us to the precious throne of grace. Amen. 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 This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. These are the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thou faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, said my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh. It is good that a man should go forth and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. He puts his mouth in the dust, and so he there may be forth. He gives his cheek to him that smelt him. He is filled full with reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, he will, he will have compassion according to the multitude of his mercy. For he do not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. These are the whole words. Amen. 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 Acknowledging 
bless and sanctify this offering, that you will bless and sanctify the gift. Return it to them, Psalm 30, 60, even a hundred fold, because we can never ever be forgiven. Therefore, we know that all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee all things. Happy birthday to you, 
Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Tell us your age, baby. <laughs> Amen, baby. We would, we would be remiss if we did not uh, read into your hearing the one from our sickness so that we can pray for them. Amen. Pray our faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up again. And if they have committed sin, they shall be forgiven them. That's James 5 and 15. Let us continue to pray for my better half, uh, First Lady Anna Miller, Deacon Henry Perry, Sister Ann Scott, Deacon Charles McCray, Brother Charles Jones, Sister Gigi Bertrand, Sister Joan Devlin, Sister Pat Coleman, Sister Serena Bernard, Brother Troy Walker, Sister Kim Waring, Sister Joanne Dockery, Sister Pat Schoolfield, Mother Vernon Griffin, Mother David Morton, Mother Julia Campbell, Keanu Lewis, that's the youth, and Samira Ogilvy. We want to keep them in prayer. Pray for the bereaved family, all those who are suffering a loss that have been a void created in their life by passing up uh, our, their loved ones. Pray for our veterans and men and women that are covering their serving in the military. Remember to visit, call, send cards of encouragement to those in nursing home, rehabilitation center, and those in prison. Church family, we, we love to share your praise report with the congregation. So let us know in advance when your loved ones are well enough to be removed from the sickness. We want to celebrate their healing, their healing. Along with us, and if you have someone that is that is sick and the congregation, let us know about that too. We want to continue to pray. Let us pray. We turn to God our Father once again. We come before you with an attitude of thanksgiving. We thank you, dear God, for the many blessings that thou bestows upon us. We thank you, dear God, for all those who are here today. We come praying, dear God, for the ones who. Uh, life on the beds of affliction. Uh, but we realize that your word says in the affliction of the righteous of the Lord deliver them out of them all. We know that you are a delivering God. So we pray to God that all those that are on that bed of affliction allow them to reach out with that spirit and take the hem of your coming and be made whole again just as we did the woman with the issue of blood. Father, we thank you today. We bless you today. We praise you today. We thank you for the earthly doctor. We thank you for the nurses. We thank you for the facility that they have for the sick. And they can only operate, but you are the healer. We know that you are the healer. So we pray, dear God, that you will just lift over the mighty hand of mercy and just have mercy today. Lord, we thank you today. We bless you today. We praise you today. We give you glory and we give you honor. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We want to hear a word from the Lord today. We have a preacher in the house. And he's one of our own. He can preach, will preach, and he's going to preach. So after Brother Anthony and uh, uh, Brother King, after they render that song that I love. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What I love. Amen. The next voice you will hear will be that of Pastor Murphy with the word for the day. Amen. Amen.
Because when you get on my nerves, I can always walk away from the relationship when I'm dating. I ain't going to get no help in here. That's why God doesn't require for us to date him, but to come into relationship and covenant with him. Because he knows that as long as we are dating him, amen, is, in other words, as long as my experience with God is superficial, then I ain't got no problem with walking away from him when he gets on my nerves. Y'all ain't gonna help me in this way. That's all right. I'm just preaching myself this morning. But if I don't make an investment, if it doesn't cost me nothing, and if I don't go through any heartaches, if this thing is free, if it, anytime you give somebody something free, they take less care of it than when it costs you some work to get. I'm struggling. Yes. We're going to church this morning. Well, I have a solution and I have an answer. Or rather, the Bible has an answer for the, the dilemma of struggling with going to church. Can I tell y'all what it is and it will be our topic for today? Stop going to church. That will fix the problem if you stop going to church. Because the issue is, is that you are going to church. And we find ourselves in a dilemma because as long as I'm going to church, there is no investment from me in the kingdom of God or the house of the Lord. I'm going to help you. You're like looking at me like, what do you mean? Stop going to church. I'm going to take you up one day. <laughs> The highest calling for me and you as followers of Christ was never to go to some building called church. God's highest calling is for me and you to be conformed to the image of Christ. Not to go to church. But to be planted in the house of the Lord. To be the church. To be the church. Yes. Not do the church. Right. A light shining in a dark world. It's never been God's desire that folks would just go to church. Because if I just go to church, then I only go for entertainment purposes. Uh, well. uh -huh. you, you've seen the movie 300. You've seen the movie Gladiator. Are you not entertained? <laughs> because entertainment makes me feel good while it's happening. But when I leave outside of the doors and the entertainment stop, I go back to feeling and struggling with the same thing I was struggling with before I came to church. Why? Because I went to church. Amen. You can go to a club and get entertained. You can get, go to a bar and get some other spirits. You can go anywhere you want and be entertained and be made felt feeling good for a temporary period. But after it, the feeling is gone, that's what's going to have to happen again. You're going to have to go again. And whenever you're not there, you're not happy. And you have no joy. But I want you to know that you are the church. Together as a body of baptized believers. And when I come in and God blesses me and fills me with joy, guess what? Because I'm the church, I can take what God has given me home with me. To the job with me. To the bus stop with me. To wherever I go, it's with me because it is me. It wants us to flourish, but we don't flourish because we have not planted ourselves in the church. Let's look at this word flourishing. 
what it means. It means thriving. It means growing. It means prospering. A tree that flourishes is doing better than okay. Its leaves are deep green and lush. Its roots are healthy and its bark is sound. It's a healthy tree. It's an evergreen tree. In other words, it doesn't make a difference what the tree is going through weatherized. The leaves always stay green. Why? Because as it says in Psalm 1, because I've been planted by the rivers of war. Because I've been planted by the life too great by the life-giving source. And as long as I grow, my roots will always get nourishment and I'll continue to flourish. So when we talk about the righteous flourishing, we are talking about our spiritual health. Spiritually flourishing means growing more and more into Christ likeness. I'm not growing in the likeness of the church building. I'm, I'm not growing in the likeness of T.D. Jakes. I'm not growing in the likeness of somebody else. I'm growing in the likeness of Christ. For that is the reflection in which I need to compare myself, not to you and you to me. Because we all got issues. In other words, if I compare myself to you and imitate you, then I'll just be a bootleg copy of Jesus. And you know what happens when you try to watch a bootleg. The sound goes out. People walk across the screen. And as soon as you get to the exciting part of the end, the daggone thing goes blank. Because we have issues. We're not to imitate one another. We are to imitate Christ. Being a blessing, developing spiritual maturity, being rooted deeply in God's love. The psalmist compares this kind of flourishing to particular trees. He compares it to a palm tree and a cedar tree. So the cedar tree is known for its durability. It's pleasing in appearance and its fragrance smells good. When Solomon built this temple, he made the columns, the posts, the beams, and the roof out of cedar. Because the building was designed to last. I ain't going to get no help in here. But we are supposed to be built to last. Amen. We are built to go through what we go through. Because whatever we're going through, God has allowed it to happen. Because he knew who was in us. And greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Whatever I'm going through, I was built for this. Hallelujah. And though to you it might look like it's going to take me out, no, because while I'm going through this, I'm getting wiser. I'm getting stronger. And I'm getting better. Cedar is durable. You use it for outdoor furniture. It's often made out of cedar because it can withstand the weather and time. Weather and time. Amen. So that those of us that are seasoned in life, that when we are planted in the house of the Lord and not just churchgoers, we can withstand the storms of life that come our way. And because we are planted in the house of God, we are like cedars. We bend, but we don't break. We go through, but we keep standing. I get my feelings hurt, but I keep showing up. Things don't go my way, but I keep praising the Lord. Everything ain't according to the way I would like it to be, but I still got worship in my mouth. And guess what else he got? It's got a pleasing smell to it. When people see people that are planted in the house of the Lord, it's a sweet smell. It's a good blessing. It, it, is, it is wonderful to be in the presence of those that are planted in Jesus. Uh, even if you feeling bad that day, when you get in the presence of the Lord, when somebody is carrying the presence of God, it can change your whole atmosphere. Have you ever walked 
walked into a place that didn't smell good, it messes up your whole mood. And all you can think of is how long do I got to be here? And how soon can I go? But when you come into a place that smells good, it changes your mood. It changes the atmosphere. It becomes pleasant to you. And you are comfortable to sit in a place that smells, I ain't gonna get no help, that smells good. <sighs> Cedar also has some other things that are really good. It repels moths. Cedar chests are used because it smells better than moth balls. Yes. And when you have a cedar chest and you put clothes in there, it repels moths. And it keeps it from eating your stuff. Y'all ain't gonna work with me in here. Listen. It, that's why he uses the example of a cedar. That when we are planted and not just church goers, amen, we are able to repel the enemy from eating what God has blessed us with. So, so, so because I'm planted in a house, he can't take my joy. Because I'm planted in a house, he can't disrupt my peace. Because I'm planted in a house, whether I got money or whether I don't, I'm content. Because I'm planted in a house, I am good for all the time. Then there's the palm tree. And a palm tree branch was symbolic of triumph and victory. And victory meant peace. So the palm branch also symbolized the hope for peace after war. A palm branch was awarded to the victor in an athletic contest in Greece. And the practice was later brought to Rome. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the donkey, people weighed what? branches at him. They were signifying we finally got victory. I ain't gonna get no help in here. But see, when you are planted in the house of the Lord and you have a relationship with the Lord, amen, not with the building, but with the Lord, you know that you've already got the victory. The reason why I can praise, though I don't feel good, is because I already got the victory. The reason why I can praise, why I got pain in my back, is why? Because I But I got the victory already secured. Amen. And I might not have it now, but Lord knows I'm going to get it sooner or later. Yeah. And when we are victors, we walk around in peace. Because I have already, he's already established peace. And I, I mean victory, and I've accepted it. And that brings me to place of peace. So no matter what comes, I got peace in it. No matter what happens, I got peace in it. Because I already know that this thing that's happening to me, it ain't going to never prosper. This attack that the enemy is bringing in my life, it ain't going to prosper. This sickness that came, it can't stay forever. My God, I'm going to outlast my sickness because sickness is not eternal, but we are. Come on, somebody. I'm going to be eternally with God. I'm going to outrun whatever's been after me. I'm going to outwalk it, outlive it, outpraise it, outworship it. Because why? Because it's not built like you. All you got to do is just keep walking. Just keep walking. And everything that's been bugging you will start falling off. Just keep walking. Everybody that's been talking about you, guess what? They're going to stop talking. Just keep walking and praising God. Everything that was against you eventually is going to die off. Everything that's been in opposition against you sooner or later will not be here. Because the weapon was not designed to be eternal. But you are. Y'all still with me? Yes. Oh, I'm going to be done in a second. Amen. So the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. 
They will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. Scripture doesn't say those who are just going to church will flourish. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of God. They will still bear fruit in old age. If they will stay fresh as a green. And every time you see them, you'll be like, man, you look good. Every time you see them, you say, what you doing? You watching out. You, every time you see them, you'll ask the question, what you eating? But it's not that all those things. It's not how much they work out. It's not what they eating. It's because they are planted in the house of the Lord. And when you are planted by the rivers of the water, you can't do nothing but flourish. That's encouraging yes. for some of us who might be feeling yes. in old age. Yes. Isn't it? God isn't done with you yet. So even though you might have some struggles, mm -hmm. God ain't done with you yet. And even though you might think that your ministry is over, I got news for you. The Bible says that they will bear fruit in their old age. Yes. I ain't got no help in here. Uh, you still got work to do. Even with your aches and pains, there's still ministry assigned to you. There are still younger folks you need to mentor. There are still people that need to be shown the way. There are still those of us that still need the help because any healthy church has to have a mixture of young and mature. I ain't old, I'm just mature. <laughs> Can I help somebody this morning? Uh, I might not run as fast as they run, but I'm still running. I might not shout as long as some others, but I still got to shout. I might have to time my shouts. I might have to minimize my shouts because I don't want to wear myself out. But I still got to shout and I still got to dance. I got to pull it out every now and then. Can't do it every Sunday like I used to. Can't run like I used to. But I got to slow walk and I'll slow walk down any devil in my way. Who am I talking to? I can't run like I used to, but I still got game. I might not be able to shoot like the young folks do. But I can hit a couple of three points. I still can turn the game around. Any season that God will allow me, I still can the So don't be trying to put me out the pass. <laughs> still got some game left in me. Look at your neighbor, some neighbor. I still got some game. All right. <laughs> Lord Jesus, how we get there? Just stick with me. Oh, I still got some game. My God, that's encouraging. Yeah. There's still fruit for you to bear. That's that's encouraging. Amen. You, you are still full of sap. And it's that fresh sadness that shows the world the Lord is upright. Because when you start doing what you do, they can't believe you're still doing what you've been doing, what you've been doing for years and years and years. They don't understand why you keep showing up and you get here before everybody else. They don't understand how you're so excited. Where you get all that energy from? How in the world do you praise God like that? How in the world can you be that old and do what you do? I'm trying to tell you how. that God says that in my old age, I ain't going to just get through time. I'm a very... He is my rock. And there is no, no unrighteousness in him. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord are flourishing. They're blessed. They're prospering. They're connected. They're emotionally engaged in the things of the Lord. Mm. Uh, they're making a difference. They're fulfilled. They're, their very lives proclaim God's goodness. 
They always looking for somebody to bless, somebody to help, somebody to minister to, somebody to be an example to. They not just good with just coming to church, waiting until it's time to go so you can get a good eulogy. They're waiting for somebody to show up so that they can say something, that they can teach something. I got all this knowledge, and I ain't got nothing to do with it. There's something to do with it. Bless somebody. Encourage somebody. Help somebody. Well, for some of us, flourishing ain't the first word to come to our mind when we talk about church. Instead of saying, I'm spiritually flourishing, some of us might say, if I be honest, I'm spiritually dry. Instead of saying, I'm thriving, I'm emotionally tired. Instead of saying, I'm connected, I am, I'm disconnected. Instead of, I'm prospering, I'm hurting. Instead of I'm fulfilled or making a difference or full of joy, I'm still searching, still reaching, still looking, still trying to obtain something that I can't seem to grasp hold of. I go to church, but I ain't flourishing. I go to church, but I ain't got no joy. I go to church, and I don't really enjoy it no more. Because we ain't got this, and we don't have that, and because this ain't there, and that ain't that, and this ain't this. Man, don't you know that you are the church? Yes. We can change the atmosphere yes. by opening our mouth and clapping our hands. Yes. You ain't got to wait for nobody to show us. Stop counting how many people come and just act like it ain't nobody but you and Jesus. Yes. 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 Those who are planted will flourish. If you think back, you remember that most of our lives are just a seed. And every seed must be planted and watered in order for it to grow. A seed has tremendous potential. A seed has the potential to grow, to thrive, to multiply, to produce fruit, to be a blessing to others. But a seed that's not planted only has the potential to lie dormant. It will become unproductive, unfruitful, and dissatisfied. Your life is a seed. And a seed can only grow if it's planted. Remember the parable of the sower who sowed seed on all kinds of ground. Jesus used the soil in that story as a metaphor for the potential of each of us has to be planted and bear spiritual fruit. Some people have the potential to grow, but they never make it. Some start to grow, but they fade away. And some start to thrive spiritually, but the worries and concerns of this world, the bills and the struggles, choke the word out of their life. And they never accomplish what God wants them to accomplish. Going to church isn't the same as being planned. For example, you wake up on Sunday morning and you might say, yeah, are we going to church today, baby? Or no. Listen, if you're when you're planning, you never say, are we going to church? Because church isn't a destination. The church is who you are. Attending worship is never really a question because we are the church. I guarantee you that you never ask your family, hey, you think we ought to eat today? No, what are we eating today? <laughs> you probably never asked, do you want to breathe oxygen? <laughs> or are you in the mood for oxygen today? <laughs> no, we don't do that. Breathing and eating are never really a question. Going to church is never really a question because we are the church. But what does that word church even mean? The Greek word we translate as church is ecclesia. And ecclesia was any gathering or assembly. Over time, it came to mean the gathering or the assembly of Christians who came together to worship and to encourage one another in the faith. But the word ecclesia 
is also a compound word formed by putting two words together. In Greek, the E-K-E means out, and the ecclesia comes from the word kaleo, which means called. So the ecclesia literally means the called out ones. Has nothing to do with a building, but it has everything to do with the called out ones. In other words, we gather together to worship God, to hear God's word together, and to use our gifts together. The, the strengthen by this, to strengthen each other by gathering together. This is why we come together as a church. And here's what happens to us when we are playing. Your roots grow deep. Jeremiah 17 and 8 says it this way. They are like trees that are planted along the riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by heat or worried by long months of drought. Maybe right now some of us ain't feeling that way. Maybe some of us ain't feeling heat right now. But if you keep on living, you will experience the heat. And what you got to know is that if you are planted, the heat won't bother you. It might be some discomfort, but it won't make me quit. It might be a little discouraging, but I'll find my voice of praise. Think about a redwood tree. They can grow to be 30 stories high. Their root system can grow 100 feet and up to 150 feet. Their roots intertwine with the roots of other trees. In other words, they invest in one another. They have a relationship one with another. I, I'm not coming to church and not have a relationship with you. I don't know what level of relationship it will be, but I will have a relationship with you. If it's simply just good morning and God bless you. Those that are planted bear fruit. And if you bear fruit, then that means you are a blessing to somebody else besides yourself. As we said before, your fruit ain't for you, but it's for somebody else. So if I'm producing fruit, it means that I am a walking blessing to somebody else. Who am I talking to? Yes, I might be a little slower than I used to be, but I'm still a blessing to somebody. My God, all I got to do sometimes is just do the ministry of presence. Just show up sometimes. Just be here sometimes. And you can be a blessing to somebody. Who am I talking to? Yep, I might be a little bit older than I used to. Got some aches and pains. But don't get it twisted. I'm still a blessing. Don't look at me sideways when I praise. Don't think I'm going to fall down because I'm a little excited. Well, God got me. And he's upholding me with his righteous hand. I came to praise the Lord. I came to lift him up. I didn't come to look at you. I didn't come to see you show up. To magnify the Lord. If I got a witness in the house, huh? you ought to say thank you, Jesus. You ought to say I'm so glad. You ought to say I am blessed. I'm a blessing. Make the hat to somebody. I'm a blessing on a bus stop. I'm a blessing in my cubicle. I'm a blessing in my job. Bless them on the forklift. Bless them in the warehouse. When I drive by, People bring out the praise. I'll bless them while I'm driving. Bless them while I'm on the highway. Bless them when I step in the house. I'm a blessing wherever I go. Bless them when I'm in the city. Bless them when I'm in the field. Bless them when I come in. And bless them when I go out. Who am I talking to? Can't go as fast. But my blessings are still good. It's just a part of who I am. And everywhere I go, somebody going to get blessed. Because they're going to smell that sweet fragrance. They ain't going to be nautical. Or a listener tell. 
what is going to be the fragrance of a Christian that's planted in the house of the Lord. Come on, stand to your feet. Stop going to church. And be the church. Come on, put your hand on yourself, on your heart. And say this to yourself. I am the church. Come on, say it to somebody else. Say, neighbor, neighbor you, you, and I, and I are, are the church. The church. Amen. Maybe you're here today. Hallelujah. And you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you're watching on Facebook. Wherever you're at, doesn't make a difference. God sees you where you at. You haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Today is the opportunity to do so. This is the best decision you could ever make. Hallelujah. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Maybe you know him and you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, but you just need restoration or rededication. If that's you today, I need restoration, rededication. And wherever you are, slip out wherever you slip there. We would love to pray for you. I need restoration. It's been a minute since I prayed, been since I've been in fellowship. And I just want to get back to right standing with the Lord. And last call, maybe you just need a church home. And God has touched your heart. He said, it's the place for you. This is where you need to be planted so you can bloom. Amen.
while, while I was away, I realized that it's not religion, but it's the relationship you have with Jesus the Christ. Yes, indeed. Amen. Yes, indeed. I want to say, if me leaving offended anyone, forgive me yes. if that offended you. God bless you. So, 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 Savior, the majesty, glory, dominion, and power. Let the church sing. 